All right, guys, I got a live telesale for you where I close someone on the phone from home in this office, okay, from start to finish, include all the good stuff you need. So watch it the whole way through. And this is a mortgage protection lead. And I do have people that ask me all the time, but Ryan, you never, you never do final expense, but Ryan, you never do life insurance. Okay, you're overthinking this. Okay, you're just switching the word out from mortgage protection to life insurance. Hey, I'm calling you about that life insurance. Hey, I'm calling you about that final expense. And the only other difference you're gonna make through the entire presentation is how you find the need. So with need for mortgage protection, you can watch how I do it. If I was doing need for life insurance, I'd say, hey, so how much income are you making? 100,000, okay, perfect. So what we wanna do is replace that income for three to five years so your family has time to adjust to that income loss. Okay, because losing 100 grand, even losing 20 grand a year is, is a big income adjustment. Okay, so we're going to replace it for 300,000 to replace that income for three years, or 500,000 to replace it for five years. And we give them both options. Final expense, how you find the need, you're going to go over, um, hey, so who's going to cover your funeral expenses, you know, when you pass away? Um, do you want to cover flights for your family? Because they're going to have to take off work and obviously rush to buy a flight. It's usually a week out, so the flights are going to be pretty expensive. So I would add in another $5,000 for flights. Um, remember, with final expense, that every 20 years, inflation doubles. So if we're getting $10,000 today and you're 60 and you're 80, this is going to be worth $5,000. So we want to get extra. Do you want to leave any gifts for the grandkids? But Ryan, I don't care what happens. I want to be cremated. Okay, so maybe we have enough money for a celebration of life. This isn't for you. This is your last, I love you, that you leave to the people you care about, okay? But Ryan, I don't really care what happens when I die. Okay, what are you going to do when, you're, when your spouse passes? Well, I'm going to get a boat, okay? How are you going to afford that boat? Let's put $20,000 so we have a down payment on a boat so you can do that. But Ryan, I don't care what happens when I die. Okay, what about the bills? How much income are you losing? All right, let's replace, let's add up your electric, your car payments, all these bills, and let's replace that income for your wife for six months so she has time to adjust. So for final expense, it's just trying to find, there's always gonna be a loss of income when someone passes. So we're just trying to find that need by asking good questions and building up the value. I mean, you could really, if you're very curious about it, it's not just for funeral expenses, you can build up value on so many different things by being curious and being engaging, asking questions. Okay, so that's life insurance. That's final expense. Now watch mortgage protection. Enjoy. Here you go. Here you go. Here I go with the close flow. We're going to look at the script, yo. And we're going to help out a family get protection. Oh, yes, we are. I'm going to read this thing to the letter, <laughs> literally like a <laughs> robot. And, Don't crush them. Uh, and we'll see if this lady gets protection. She might not. She might. All right. So guys, this you have up. If this is for one call closes, you read this first part, verify the info, and then you go right into it. This is if you're doing telesales. But most of us, when we start off, we're setting our appointments. So we pick up right here what we do. All right. Let's call this lady up. Her name is Nicole, and it's a mortgage protection appointment. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go now. Hey, Nicole, how are you? Right, sorry, I was actually just about to text you to see what was going on. Oh, yeah, it's it's uh, I'm sorry about that. We usually have a 30 minute window to call. I just got off the phone, my last client. <laughs> How's it? Yeah, it's just kind of like you know, double checking. Yeah, gotcha. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm Ryan Reynolds, I've been doing this for about 13 years. What I'm called is a a medical field underwriter. It's uh, it's kind of like a national broker. It allows me to shop every A-rated company nationwide. There's uh, about 63 of them. We look at companies you've heard of like Mutual of Omaha, Transamerica, Aetna, Affleck, et cetera. You know, the list goes on. Um, I'll spend about three minutes on some medical questions. And then based on your age and health, uh, that's going to let me know what you qualify for at the lowest cost. Is that making sense? Yeah, I understand Okay, perfect. And then I see your loan amount right now is at 179,000, right? Yep. Perfect. And then what's the house appraised at? The house is appraised at 100 um at, uh 190,000. 190. Nice. Okay. 
So if you sold it today, paid off your loan, you got about 10,000 left over, right? Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay. Um, and, you know, obviously we protect our cars, you know, those are assets that go down in value. Um, this is obviously an asset that goes up in value. So, I mean, if we, we fast forward, you know, 10, 15 years, somewhere in there, let's just say we pay down our house to hundred grand and let's just say the value of your house goes up to 250. Okay. Well, obviously at that point, if you sold your house for 250, paid off your level hundred, you got 150,000, right? So, you know, we got an asset going from 10, 150, higher and higher and higher, you know, as time goes on, right? Um, so that's that kind of why you're looking into protecting the asset because it's a growing one? Yeah. Um, also, um, I read up on mortgage insurance that, and if God forbid nothing happens to me, mm -hmm. at the end of it, I would be able to get, get um, the premium refunded. Yeah, it depends on if you can qualify for it. So we'll find out here in about three minutes. But yeah, those are great plans. You are young enough. So we should probably get be able to get that in place. But I'll run the numbers through all 63 carriers and we'll see what's available. And then my job is to look out for you and just make sure we get you the lowest cost and obviously the best coverage available. Okay. So yeah, we'll definitely look into that stuff for sure. So I got your age at seven, correct? Yes, sir. Nice. And then Nicole, uh, what do you uh, do for work? When they call you, sir, you're doing it right. All right, so warehouse worker, okay. And um, I know your income probably varies, but what would you say it is typically for like the year? Um, for the year, gross payment, or do you want the net payment? Um, the gross. Um, hold on, I'm doing the math. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. I'd say roughly around a little more than that, but that's just kind of like the base pay. Yeah. Gotcha. Including any overtime I do or like any events that, you know, Walmart does, stuff like that. Gotcha. Okay. So give or take, I mean, probably with some overtime, maybe like more in that range. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. And then um, I'm going to ask you a couple, a couple tough questions. I mean, it, because this is important coverage, but, you know, it's, it's important to ask, you know, so we make sure we have you, you have a plan B in place. Um, if you died yesterday, God forbid it was like a bad car crash, heart attack, and you weren't here today, you know, what's your plan for the house right now? Um, for right now, um, I have I have um life insurance as well as health insurance and whatnot, blah blah. blah. But the house would go to my mom. Okay. What's your if mom's what's your mom's first name? Danielle. Danielle. Okay. And then that life insurance, is that through work? Yes, sir. Awesome. Okay. Um, so the work policies, we don't consider just because the work owns them. And I've just talked to too many families to where, you know, breaks my heart, but like, you know, so say someone got cancer, got really sick, and then they're not working anymore. And the work plan gets dropped and then they can't apply for a plan because of their illness. So it's always good to have something you own yourself as well. So you're fully protected, no matter, you know, obviously you could get laid off too. Um, as far as your work policy goes, you know, if if you got cancer or something like that, you know, at work, do you have any disability built into it, or you got injured, couldn't work? Do they yeah, pay? Actually, I um, I paid for um the best plan that if I do get ill or something, mm -hmm. Walmart will cover for me. If like if I get severely ill and I cannot can no longer work, Walmart will cover me. Um, pay me about sixty to seventy of my pay paycheck. Or I think about a year if I'm if I'm reading this if I'm remembering it correctly I'd yeah. have to go look up my insurance policy honestly. Good, um, good, okay. So I'm glad we got that. Then, warm if um if 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 I turned out to be terminal or something Walmart will pay will pay me out my life insurance. Good, okay, good. So at least we have some of that in place. Yeah, the max disability coverage through work is actually sixty percent. Um, so that's good. You have that. So it should be maxed out. Um, but we'd still lose about 40% of your income, which would obviously make bills a lot tighter and obviously harder to stay in the property. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's our plan for that. Um, we don't have any private coverage right now, right? Yeah, no private. Okay. Um, wait, does house insurance count? Um, no, that's just the homeowners that just make sure the house is built back up in case there's a fire, you know, floods, something like that. Okay. This is kind of protection that protects just your asset, you know, your house. So 
there's really two types of coverage that the bank makes you have, and that's to protect them. That's the homeowner's insurance. So in case there's a fire, the house gets rebuilt. And in case you you know default in your loan, um, it makes sure that that the house gets built up, up to that value. And they want that value there in case they need to take the house back in a foreclosure. They can turn around and sell it and make a profit. The other type of coverage that banks make you have now is called PMI. It's principal mortgage insurance. And what that's designed to do is, in, remember back in 2008, we had all the, the foreclosures going on? Vaguely, I was like, I don't know, 12 when that was happening. <laughs> yeah, you're young, that's for sure. Well, basically what was happening is they'd give out a loan for 300000 and then the person defaulted, and then they could only sell it for like two fifty. So the bank lost like fifty grand. So now they make people have that insurance in case you lose, and to make sure until you have 20% equity in the house, so that that way they don't lose money if they have to sell it below value. Right. So, so those are to protect the bank. This one's more to protect you and your asset in case, you know, like a death, you get cancer, get disabled, making sure there's no way possible the bank's taking back your biggest investment. OK, does that kind of make sense? Yeah. OK, perfect. So we'll see if we can solve some of these problems here. And then uh, just out of curiosity, I mean, other than budget, since we do customize the plan for you, um, is there any reason why you wouldn't want to protect your house with a plan? could not think of a reason why I shouldn't. Okay. Well, let's, let's see, we'll do some shopping here and, and see if we can get something in place. Okay. Now, um, just so you know that, you know, this, Nicole, this isn't something you can buy though. You do have to be approved for it. So if you do see a need for it, like most applicants do, um, my job is really simple. It's just to help you put a request in for approval. And then the insurance company, they're going to give us an answer in about three to seven days. And then if approved, which is the goal, you have an additional 30 days to adjust your policy up or down. So basically, you know, I'm going to give you a couple of plans. Um, if you're not really sure which one you want, uh, don't worry about it because we'll have a whole 30 days to adjust it. We just want to see if we can get you approved first. Is that making sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Perfect. And then if you don't want a policy, you know, just let me know. Uh, I'll close the case out. We do not do second appointments since we shop every carrier nationwide. And we won't even know if you can even get it until we apply for it. Okay. So any questions or concerns on this? Um, I'm just double checking. Uh, I would be able to look at the different plans and be able to budget. Like you told me 30 days to 30 days to pick a plan and stuff like that. Uh -huh. If um I wanted to ask if I don't pick a plan, will I be able to pick one next year or is this kind of like a one time thing? Yeah, so we're going to customize everything for you in about three minutes, and then kind of I'll work with you on your budget, kind of needs, all that stuff. So we're going to do all that shopping. The good thing is you're 27. So most people don't look into this stuff until they're like 45 plus, and the prices are way higher because it's all based on Asian health. So I'm like pretty much 100% confident we're going to find something that works for you. But again, just kind of tell me what you like, dislike about it, and then we'll kind of keep adjusting it, okay? All right, perfect. And then the insurance carriers, um, they will require three things for the approval process. Um, I don't need them now. I just need to make sure you have them on you. They'll ask for a driver's license for background check, a social for a prescription check, and then a routing and account number to pay for the policy if approved. Um, they don't take debit cards because they're not secure, but they do take routing and account numbers, which banks know are secure because they've been on checks for 60 years. Um, did you have those three things on you? Okay, hold on. My driver's license, social service, no, social security number, and what was the third thing? It was a routing and account number. That's how they take the payment. Routing and account. Yeah. Number. Sorry. Just... Yeah. So we can grab them later. Just need to make sure you have them on you. That's all. Uh, yeah. Do you need to like have a picture of my social security card? No, nope, no, nope. just... just the information we'll put in there. It's what the insurance carrier will ask for. Okay. okay um, cool. Did you have any questions on those three things? Uh, no. Uh, what do you need for my driver's license? Do you need my driver's license number or do you need like a picture oh, of it? No, nah, just the number they'll ask for. They just check for like DUIs and stuff like that. Number. Me. Okay. Okay. All right, perfect. Well, hey, let's get into the medical and we'll kind of see what's available here, okay? Yeah, hold on. Uh, Sorry, I have my dog on me. She hears something on the phone, so she's just like, hey. <laughs> no worries, no worries. All right. All right, um, perfect. So um, height and weight for you, and then smoker, non-smoker. 
non-smoker i've never smoked in my life good that saves you some money right there for sure uh what prescriptions are current are you currently taking so they'll, they're going to pull your prescription record and kind of see everything that was sent to the pharmacy what's it show on there that you're currently taking I don't take any prescription drugs regularly. I, I'm on because, well, it's like, you know, I don't know. I've, you know, you just get a stuffed nose sometimes and it, you just can't get it out. Hey, I, I take Allegra, so I'm right there with you. <laughs> yeah, so I'm just having some allergies, so I had to get some Flonase. But other than that, I don't take um, any prescription medicine normally. All right. So last 10 years, okay, we're going back 10 years. Any prescriptions that you took for over a month can you think of? For a month, no. Okay, um, just temporary just, stuff, right? Yeah, just like you know, cold or something, or like I had to get antibiotics because my dead mask is out in the rain with the dogs. <laughs> that does happen, especially this time of year for sure. All right, so final questions. I'm gonna go through these pretty quick, and then we'll start messing with some options and customizing some stuff for you. Um, any COVID hospitalizations over the last year? No, sir. Last 10 years, any blood pressure, heart attack, stent, congestive heart failure, bypass, pacemaker, irregular heartbeat? No, sir. Angina, cancer, stroke, oxygen, inhalers for asthma, COPD, diabetes pills, insulin, diabetic neuropathy, HIV, AIDS, liver disease, kidney disease, or hepatitis C? No. Lupus, bipolar, mental disorders, PTSD, pain management, nerve pain, addiction to drugs or alcohol, felonies, or DUIs? No, and I don't, um, just so you know, I don't drink at all. Like, I can't stand the taste of alcohol. That That's, you're going to live a long time. That's a smart move. I like it. All right, so surgeries, we're going back 10 years. Surgeries or hospitalizations in the last 10 years? Uh, I have not been hospitalized, nor have I had any minor or major surgeries. All right, well, hey, here's the good news. You should be coming back a preferred on everything, and that's a good thing. Uh, we want to um, we want to lock in your your rates as soon as possible because we never know when our health could change. And unfortunately, I have to tell people all the time that you know, hey, you waited too long, and now the rates are too high or or it's too expensive. But once if we get approved on it, it locks your rate in, and then regardless of your health or age down the road, um, you know they can't they can't drop you from the policy or raise your rate. So the key is kind of like get it while it's on sale um and lock it in you know what i'm saying yeah okay perfect well let's uh can you grab a pen and paper here i'm going to run some numbers and we'll start customizing some plans for you all right i'm already ahead of you all right you're fast i like it give me about one minute here and pulling up the software uh, to run those numbers for you oh, man. Uh, come here, River. Maybe that state. how are you liking the house so far, no, we're going to be like, not <laughs> he's, he's not. Just, like, she's like, can we go home now? <laughs> she's not used to it, huh? Were you living in an apartment before, or were you at? She's used to living, you know, having somebody there all the time, I guess. And, you know, I go to work, I go to work now, I'm just by myself, with the dog, obviously. Gotcha. Okay. It's been very fun. Um, I, I live in Bethlehem now. And it's like a very nice city. Awesome. Hey, it's always good to be, uh, you know, owning an investment versus uh, throwing your money at rent, you know? Exactly. Like what I paid out in mortgage is what I would pay in rent in Beth. Like that's less than what I would pay in rent in Bangor, for God's sake. Exactly. It's insane. Exactly. All right, perfect. So grab a pen. We're going we're gonna to customize this. I'm going to give you this first option. You tell me what you like, dislike about it, and we'll kind of keep adjusting it. So this first one is uh, covers all everything all at once. It's the best plan. And then if we need to lower it, we can. But we're going to do 179000 of coverage. And this is going to be full coverage. So it's going to be basically any... Uh, any death at all. So whether it's a heart attack, cancer, stroke, riding a bull, skydiving, drinking and jiving, uh, car accidents, you know, you name it, you're covered. Okay. So anything at all, you're locked in. And that's the one that's really important to lock in your health right now because you're preferred so that if your health changes down the road, they can't, you know, drop your policy or raise your rates. Okay. So full coverage. Um, below that, 
So any death at all, you're covered. We're going to do 179000 for living benefits. Living benefits. Okay. Now, that's really important to have for you since you're 27. And what it's going to do is protect you if you need help with any daily living activities. So I just read off a lot of stuff earlier to check to see if you had it. A lot of those things would cause you maybe not to go to work. Um, you know, maybe you need help getting dressed in the morning, bathing, um, eating. You know, I had a good friend of mine just got in a car crash and his uh, wife's having to help him get dressed in the morning and, and eat and stuff like that. This is where oh that, God, yeah, so this is where that kick in. Unfortunately, they didn't have the coverage, but you know, in those kind of situations, obviously you can't go to work. It'd be nice to have 179,000 tax free that you could tap into to use to make mortgage payments, pay off the house, you know, whatever the case may be. Okay. So that, this is Jesse asking real quick. Um, uh, living benefits. If the money would definitely go to paying off the mortgage and whatnot, and whatever's left over would probably go to me. Um, you can use it either way. So you can use it to cover bills if you need to for whatever you want, or you can use it to pay off the house. But you have access to that hundred seventy nine thousand tax free. I'm saying if I do need to get in, I do need to tap into this. Would I need to pay um the mortgage insurance like? would I need to pay the mortgage insurance company over the years or would that just be like, you know, Oh, I can have to do it. We're done. Yeah. Let's just say, you know, to, you got approved on it next week. You got cancer and you, you couldn't work anymore. Cause you, you know, you're obviously your weed going through chemo. You could say, Hey, give me a hundred thousand. I need, I need a hundred grand just to use to take care of living. You know, you could do that. You could take it and say, Hey, I want to pay off my whole house right away. You can do whatever you want, but it's always going to be at 179,000. So let's just say you only owe 130 on your house. You could say pay off my house and then give me the rest of it to use for whatever I want. Hmm. Okay. Okay. I say none of that does happen. Um, what do I pay? Do I pay monthly, quarterly, yearly? It's going to be monthly. Yeah. We're going to get the cost here in one second. I just got to go over a couple extra features and then uh, okay. we'll get you that. So, so the next thing I want you to write down is, 1500 a month. 1500 For full. Really? Yeah, 1500 a month for full coverage disability. Full coverage disability. And this is going to be in place to make up for that income gap, you know, because you're going to have 60% of your income coming in if you can't work. But at least, you know, this will make up, make the mortgage payment and cover some of that 40% that we're still missing in income. And this is full coverage disability. So whether it's an illness, you know, I read off a lot of things earlier that could cause someone not to go to work, or whether it's an injury, um, you're going to be able to um, have that 1500 bucks a month pay out for a total of two years. Okay. It pays you two years to get back on your feet to make sure there's no way you're going to lose your house. So even if you did, didn't have disability through work, at least we have enough to make sure the mortgage is being paid. So we're not going to lose the house back to the bank. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, let me reiterate. I have 1,500 disability payments and I'll have two years to get back on my feet. Yep, exactly. So 1,500 a month will pay out. So, and you'll pay you. Oh, okay. That makes more sense. You'll pay me. Correct. Well, not me, but the insurance company will. <laughs> I wish I had. I wish I had fifteen hundred to pay, but no. <laughs> the insurance company. Will. They'll pay you one thousand five hundred a month. Yep, for two years. Okay. Yep. I'm just checking for two years. Yep. Now this policy is going to go for twenty five years. Twenty five years, and at the end of twenty five years, they're going to give you seventy five percent of your money back to you. Okay, so 75% of your money, money back to you. Back. Yep, 75%. Um, and that policy is 110 a month, which is around the same cost of, you know, basically car insurance, but car insurance, you do get money back. <laughs> and it, this protects a way bigger asset than a car. Okay, so let's do some math on this real quick. <clears throat> so if we're paying 110 a month, 110 a month times 0.25, technically we're only paying 2750 a month 
for our insurance, right? Because the other 75% is going to go in a savings account. So we're going to go 110 times 0.75. And that means $82.50 is going to go into savings. So out of that 110 a month, 2750 is going to be the cost for your insurance. And then $82 a month is going to go into savings. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Like well, P is a repeat to stuff, to repeat to stuff. Okay, well, 75%, about 80 something dollars would go in the savings account, and about $27 would go, go to paying the insurance for maintenance fees and whatever they need to, like, you know, interest or whatever. Right, exactly. So we're going to add that up 82.50 times 12 times 25. We're going to get back at the end of 25 years. 24,750. We're going to get back that tax free, 24,750. Now, can you guess what you're going to use that money for in 25 years? A very nice vacation. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, well, you could use it for that. Yeah. But what I have the same plan on my house, and what I'm doing with it is I'm paying off my house. So basically, I have protection on my house. For whether I'm living and something happens or death, something happens for 25 years, I have a savings account, which is good to save money. And then the third thing it does is it pays my house off five years early and saves me five years of mortgage payments and all the extra interest I would have paid on my house. Let me just double check. Um, I would get 24750 Yep. You would get it back. And then I would personally just pay off the rest of your loan. And then anything extra you have, you can keep, but that way you're cutting your loan short by five years of mortgage payments. And what happens if, say, I pay it off sooner anyway because I plan to make principality payments as well? Yeah, so I, instead of putting that extra money towards the principal, I would just put it into this because it does the exact same thing and you're getting protection now on top of it, right? So this, again, this does really three things. It's protecting the house, your biggest investment, you know, death, you know, living benefits plus your disability. Two, it's good to save money. And three, it cuts out five years of mortgage payments. So that saves you money there too as well. So, you know, it you could do that, but let's just say you 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 want to do both, you know, get this in place and pay your house off early. At the end of that 25 years, you would just get the money back. You can do whatever you want with it. But me personally, instead of paying an extra 110 towards your mortgage. I would just put it towards this because you're getting something from it. You're getting all the living, you're getting all the protection, plus you're doing the exact same thing and paying off your house early since you get your money back in 25 years. Oh, I'm just asking because like, I do plan to pay off some of the principality payment no matter what. And I just want to ask like, say like something, a, a thought, like if a miracle happens and I get a windfall of money and I do pay off my mortgage, would I be able to get the money back I spent into it then? Or would I just need to wait 25 years? I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, great question. Um, it's on a sliding scale. So let's just say you were 12 and a half years in. Um, that's halfway through. You're going to get about half of your money back of that 75%. So I would just, at, at that point, if you did win the lotto, paid it off, I would keep the coverage in place because you still have disability coverage. You still have living benefits. Just keep it as it, if there's no loan, it will just pay out to your beneficiary or to you and you can use it however you want. But would the payment go down or would it just stay? It would just, it's locked in at the 110. Yeah. Okay. Just double check. It. Yeah. So, I mean, it's up to you. I mean, you could cancel it, get some money back, but I would just keep it in place because trying to apply for a policy, you know, when you're like 40 or something, is going to cost you probably like 250 a month. And right now you can lock it in for 110. See what I'm saying? So it's up to you what you want to do, but you know, those are kind of options. Me personally, I would just keep it in place and get the full 75% back and still have the protection, you know, to protect you. Okay. So kind of taking a look at this first option. Um, tell me some things you're liking about it. Tell me some things you're not liking about it. And then we can always customize it further. Um, so so kind of ask me some questions and we'll customize it for you. I like the 150 uh, uh disability payment. Um you know, in the two years to get back on my feet. Because, you know, God forbid, if something does happen, I, I full on would like to be able to like try to live by myself again, whatnot. And having that money for when, if I'm going through probably a severe medical condition, that would be wonderful. But um, 
I'm kind of concerned with like um the twenty four thousand. Hold on. Let me double check. Like this covers everything. Like I get that, uh-huh. but like say if I buy another house, uh-huh. like again if I get a whole this is like completely if this will if oh God I'm hoping this happens. You know. Like, <laughs> yeah. Say I pay off my mortgage and say about 12 years and I still have like 12 years, but I do buy another home. Mm-hmm. Would I be able to add that home onto a mortgage insurance? Like if I get a like a nicer home or I build a home. Yeah, that's would a, that be covered or would that be a completely separate policy? No, that's a great question. Um, the old ones used to be tied to your loan and the thing that they kind of stopped doing that in 2008 because people would lose the coverage if they refinance or moved and then they had to apply at an older age. These new ones that that are out, they transfer from house to house. Um, so the coverage would stay locked in at that price and you don't have to get a new one. So just protect the new house. Now, if your new loan was 400,000, you know, you have the coverage at 179, it's still gonna protect the house because it's gonna give enough money to make mortgage payments, pay off half the house, whatever the case may be, but it will be transferable. Okay, and just to clarify, if I do get a new house, will I need to, and it's like another 30, 30 year thing, will that like add up? Like, can I keep that adding up or would I need to like, after 25 years, would I need to make a new policy? Um, yeah, it will stay locked into 25 years. So if you did buy another house in 15, then this protection would stay in place for 10 and then they'd give you the money back and you can do what you want with it. So everything kind of stays locked in, but it is transferable. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So, you know, sometimes I have people get more coverage just, you know, because it's on sale right now because you're younger and healthy. So that's another option. If you want to get a look at a little extra, we could see what the cost is. Um, There's a free rider that I recommend a lot of people add on because it's super cheap. And then on that disability, which I offer disability coverage standalone products, just a heads up, you know, at your age, you know, if you got disability with no return of premium, it'd probably cost you about 90 bucks a month for 1500. So if you kind of, since you have a house kind of having that all built in, um, it does save you quite a bit of money. Um, the other option we could do, and I have some people do this, is they'll add on a rider of a, another 200,000 of accidental coverage. So that way, if they did die of an accident, it'd pay out 379,000 instead of 179. And that raises your your rate only a few dollars. It goes up to 127 and you still get 75% of that back. So that's a rider I do see people do sometimes just to get a little extra while it's you know locking a lower rate. So that's uh, could, well, I'm sorry, could you give me those numbers again? Um yeah, if so, I buy kind of an if the it's 127. Yeah, so we have the 179 full coverage at 110. And then we can add on another 200,000 if you die of an accident for one, it raise it to 127. So basically another $17. Um, and then you get, it would pay out 379,000 if it's an accident, 179,000 if you die of a disease, and then still 179,000 for living benefits. Okay. So say if I get the 200, if I add on the 200,000 200 grand by right. death by accident, the, that would make my monthly payment what again? It'd be 127. Monthly 127 a month. And at the end of the year, as I get 75% back, would that add on to the 24,000? And yeah, 24, yeah, exactly. And how would that be if I do add this? Let's see how much you get back. Uh, and I, I assume that's for another 25 year lock-in. Yeah, exactly. Same, same plan. It's just a rider that you can add on for really cheap just to get some extra coverage. That way, if you do buy, you know, another house down the road, you know, you got maximum 379,000 now to cover that loan, um, you know, and still be locked in a low rate. Okay. Um, but let's add it up. So we got that times 12 times five. Um, you would get back 28 thousand six seventy six instead of twenty four thousand seven fifty twenty eight thousand basically twenty eight thousand seven hundred six 
Six six seventy six. Six seventy six. Sorry. No, no worries. Yeah. So you get an extra four grand back, basically, um, and you get an extra two hundred thousand. Uh, in case there's an All right. That um that will be paid in full back yeah. to me. Yep. And tax free, you can use it to pay off the house, do whatever you want with it, you know. But that's what I'd recommend is most people get this one in place to to cut their loan short by five years and still have protection. Great. This does sound this does sound like something I'd want just that full insurance. Uh -huh. Um I would like to go over my finances just so I can like, you know, set aside the money because I'm a big planner uh -huh. and I need to physically see every like all my information and write it down and do the math myself. Yeah, you could probably do that. Silly. <laughs> no, no, no. Perfect. Yeah. Um, you could probably do that in the next thirty days, though, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I'm, okay. I have well, my bank account right now. I can just like. Yeah. So what we want to do is just kind of pick a starting point, and then uh, we'll see. We'll find out about three to seven days if we can get you approved, and then um, if we want to make any changes to it, we'll have a whole thirty days to adjust anything we want. All right. Cool. Uh, which one do you think is a good starting point? You want to do the 110 for the 179, or do you like the extra 379, 179? I don't know why. I like the 127 one the best, just like okay. just in case something happens, like God forbid. Yeah, you have some um, extra. And the nice thing is, too, I mean, we could put your mom in there for now, but the thing I always recommend is you know, get it now, you can change your beneficiaries anytime. So if you do have kids down the road or you get married, you know, at least you can change your beneficiaries around and, and have that protection, you know, locked in. Anytime. Like, at, no, like, anytime. Do that. Okay. And yeah. just, just asking, um, say if later on, like, if my mother's still like my beneficiary and I do have children, but they're still young um would they be they're legally my next akin would they have a right to it or would i have to change it no that they'd have a right to it okay just um yeah exactly just and then you're gonna basically be assigned to me so i'll call you every year as well for like an annual review and just make sure that you know you're where you need to be okay so you're, sounds... you're stuck with me now <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> the best part is your name's Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, you can. You, I'm gonna say. Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> well, you can save me as Deadpool or something in your phone. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> um. Oh yeah, because I'm gonna send you my contact uh, through this process. Okay, so let's get this request filled out. You know, like I said, first step, see if we can get you approved, and then we'll get you your 30 days where we can, you know, adjust anything we want to. Okay. Um, okay. What's your middle initial? All right. So <laughs> <laughs> Name of the bank you would use to pay for the plan if you get approved on it? Fulton. Fulton. Is that F U L T O N? Yeah. And is it bank or credit union? Bank. And you open it. Yes, ma'am. I'm sir. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> so yes. I'll talk. I'll talk. I'll talk. I'll talk in a higher voice for you. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Let me see if I can uh, find the uh, routing number for you. Um, all right. So I did find Fulton Bank. Um, it's pulling up a routing number of 3031-301-1422. Um, can you verify if, that's, if we got the right bank? Uh, hold on. Let me double check. That sounds like that might be my savings account, not my checking account. It should have the same routing Oh, sorry, the routing number for both. It's uh, real quick while I'm pulling out the routing numbers. Any other questions you want me to answer? Um, that's it. We just got to verify we selected the right bank. And then the next thing it's going to ask is the account number. We have to type it in twice to make sure it matches because it's blacked out for security. So that's it. And then I'll send it over to you to email. You'll sign it. I'll walk you through that process. I'll sign it as a medical underwriter with submit. Sometimes they pull up additional questions they'll ask, and then we'll be done. Underwriter. That's what I do. So basically, I specialize in retirement planning, uh, debt reduction, uh, mortgage protection, life insurance, uh, final expense. And I just basically, it's like a broker, it just allows me to shop all the carriers all at once and just make sure we get you the lowest cost. So it's like a mortgage broker, except for like insurance. Correct. Yep, exactly. All right. And basically, I'm doing, I'm doing the... 
I'm basically doing the underwriting for you right now to help you submit it and then see if we get you approved. And then if we don't get approved, then I help you figure out what happened and what the next best route is. Routing number is zero three one. Yeah, that's what I got. So we got the right bank. Okay, perfect. So got the right bank here. Now I just got to put in the account number twice. So whenever you're ready. All right, perfect. I got that. All right, that took it. Okay. And we're gonna do. Sometimes the numbers jump around. I have to highlight it. I'm exactly the same way with dyslexia for sure. So I always double check everything all the time. Oh, I know. It's the worst with numbers for me. It's just like sometimes I'm re I just read it wrong. I'm like, eh. Yeah. Even if it's a little decibel, if I have more than like a hundred grand or something. I'm right there with you. All right, I just email that to you. Let me know when you received it, and I'll walk you through it. Insurance ESA seems to require. You got it. Yep. Click on that link. Put in the last four of your social to get into it. Hello. Yep. Yeah. So just click on the link. Put in the last four of your social to get into it. Yeah, I'm, I'm in. Just okay. To, uh... And then once you're in, you just scroll to the very bottom. That's all like a PDF. You just got to scroll, 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 all the way to the very bottom. And there's a place to type in your name. All right, we're almost we're almost done here. This is Ryan. Sorry, I don't I don't know what's happening. It's a, it actually Do you initial for this? Uh yes. Okay. Hit, and then once you hit submit, uh let me know and I'll refresh my page. Oh okay. just got it. Okay. Let me hit submit here. We'll see if there's any additional questions they have here. Um, as far as the mailers go, um I know they send out like 20 different mortgage protection mailers. How many did you fill out? I just tried to fill out the ones that T2 Financial because it, I got told by my by the, uh, my uh, realtors that you guys are the safest, but like. Yeah, just, just I make sure. I was getting a bunch of like letters telling me like, and then he, oh, you need to pay $100 with you, a copy of your deed. Or, and I'm like, I can go down to the town hall and get that for free. Why do I need to pay you? Like, you know, it's just that same normal scammy stuff you get when you buy a house. Right. Yeah. Just, I just want to give you a heads up on it. The the distribution company send those out, not us, but they get paid when you fill them out. It's all the same stuff because prices are fixed by law. So if you get more of them in, just don't fill any more out. Otherwise you get people calling you doing the exact same job I'm doing. But um, I don't know why they send so many. Just want to give you a heads up. Okay. We're all done. All right. Make sure you save my number. I'm going to have my assistant Valerie check on this every morning. And then as soon as we get some news on it, she's going to give you a call and let you know the good news. She'll leave you a, a voicemail or a text. If there's not good news, she's going to get you back on the phone with me and we'll figure out what the next best route is. Okay. Excellent. Thank you very much. Yeah. You take care. If you need anything, just shoot me a text. I'm here to help. Thank you. Dad. <laughs> Thanks, Nicole. All right. Bye. And that my friends, is how it's done.